Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news. And a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Media and City Manager Mark Roloff. Thank you for joining us on Your City Manager's Report, your source for all the local latest and greatest news here in Oshkosh, as well as a preview of the upcoming City Council meeting agenda. I'm your host, Emily Makowski, joined as always by your City Manager, Mark Roloff. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for joining us today. Great to be here, Emily. So uh, we're going to go ahead, dive into our hot topics for the first half of today's show, and then we'll go right into the Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, July 12th. 2016. So we've got a loaded show today, Mark, as always, and uh, let's get right into it. So first thing that we want to talk about is kind of a fun item. We were joking about it when we were planning and we had to include it. It's the talk of the town right now. There's some interesting items up on Oshby, uh, one of those items being a giant KFC bucket. Oh yeah, but I got to tell you, it does not include a mashed potatoes, coleslaw, and a cookie. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sorry. it does not include those the sides. <laughs> and there's no chicken either, but... Um, in all reality, the, uh, the, there is actually, it's I think it's a six six or seven foot tall KFC bucket that is up on Oshby. Um, and maybe for those of us who don't know who are watching, what exactly is the Oshby uh, website? Well, Oshby is our online uh, program that we have to sell surplus property. Mm -hmm. We purchased, in this case, the KFC bucket when we, when we purchased land uh, over on Murdoch and Jackson for the construction of the roundabout there. Uh, we took the lead in acquiring the land, and so when we acquired it, we acquired everything that went along with it, including the building and the bucket, and it's been in storage for years, and finally somebody decided, well, I don't think we have, this has any real valid municipal use, mm -hmm. so any item that doesn't have a valid municipal use or no longer has value uh, for, our, for our purposes we sell to the highest bidder. That's our ordinance requires it. But now that it, we have an online version of it, we call it Oshbuy. And you'd be amazed the number of people that take an interest in the different things that we may have for sale. This is clearly the most unique item that we've had on Oshbuy. <laughs> Usually, it's old desks, you know, computer for, equipment, office furniture. Yeah, a lot things, of things like, like that. that. Mm -hmm. Just basic stuff that you'd expect from. Uh, a governmental entity or uh, anybody that runs an office type of operation. Uh, we do sell things every once in a while. We encourage people to look at Oshbuy. Uh, it's right, you can get it right off our website and see what's online for sale. But uh, yes, that probably is the most unique item we've had in a very long time. Oh my gosh, yes. And we were out looking at it today. It is huge. Um, I think the current bid is about $1,000 right now, but I think all those bidders are kind of hiding in the weeds. They're going to come out at the end before, I think it's July 10th, which is when the the sale date ends, um, as well as those two signs and then a drive-through sign. So there's that. There's also a lot of other items on Oshby that are available, like you said, Mark, office furniture, old computers, and some more interesting tools. I think there's a mud slinger or mud jacker or something. Um, so definitely check it out. It's on the city's website. If you're on the main page, it's on the left-hand side of the page. There's a button for Oshby. You can go take a look at pictures and current bids there. Um, so a great open to our show. Uh, another thing that we want to talk about here moving forward is um, the Oshkosh Police Department, they are accepting applications for their Citizens Academy. And uh, I've only lived here for about three years, and that was a new idea to me, the Citizens Academy. Tell us a little bit about what that is and how long it's been since we've had this. Well, it's been about eight years. Chief Smith is reviving it. Those things go through cycles, and I think Chief Smith wants to see what kind of demand there is for it. Uh, but this is a free six-week program where you get to learn the ins and outs of the police department, just so you have a better understanding of uh, what they do, how they do it, uh, and you learn firsthand through lectures, but also simulated activities and some hands-on experience. So, you know, you'll get to see the canine dog in action. You'll get to see, you know, how we process evidence, uh, basic crime prevention types of things. All those things that maybe everything you wanted to know about the police department, but were afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. Maybe with our new body cameras, you'll learn how that works. Uh, but the whole idea is for the public to become more aware of what the police department does and why, and really build a good group of ambassadors 
for our police department. And I, I've seen these programs run before and they're great learning experiences. And I think they really do help uh, connect the residents of our community with our police department and it just helps make for better relations altogether. Yeah, so it's a really awesome opportunity. Like you said, you can really get behind the scenes of the inner workings of the police department, um, a lot of cool activities. And what I think is really neat, it's completely free. So it's kind of a first come, first serve basis. I believe they're only accepting 20 applications. So That's right. uh, definitely get on the police department's website and fill out that application. I think there's a little bit of a, a background check included with that as well. So. 2016, uh, I think it begins September too. So go ahead and look at the website, find out more information and send in your application. It's a great opportunity. Uh, one other update, of course, is Life Fest started today, Mark, and it's just another one of those big events here in Oshkosh that we look forward to every year, and it comes with a lot of other things like uh, traffic and additional you know, people in town. Lots of crowds. We have people from throughout the, the country that come to this event. I was at a convention years ago, and somebody mentioned, oh, you're from Oshkosh. I, uh, I live in California, and I love coming to Life Fest with my family. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. So it really is a... Um, a very welcoming event and we're great hosts that's why we're the event city but please remember that we have a lot of visitors in the area so you know not everybody knows how to negotiate roundabouts as well as we do so be kind to them and uh, just expect that you'll have a little more crowds in restaurants and uh, and running around town this weekend but as always we're great hosts here in Oshkosh and uh, we're happy to have these events going on so it's Life Fest and after that it's going to be Rock USA and then EAA we got a whole slew of activities going on throughout the rest of the summer, so uh, be patient with everybody who's visiting. Yes, and we appreciate all the great events because it gets a, it gives us the opportunity to show off Oshkosh and it brings more people into our city. So it's it's an exciting time. You gotta love summer in Oshkosh. Uh, next item we want to talk about is with the transit department, they are actually remodeling their office right now and there's a little bit of a, a change where you're going to be going if you need to go there for questions or anything. It's not too far. There's a construction type trailer that's going to be set up right there adjacent to the building. So it's still at 926 Dempsey Trail. Uh, if you're planning to go there, you know, part of the thing that we want to improve on is we don't have good handicapped accessibility at the building. The temporary building will have that type of handicapped accessibility, which the new renovations will. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, we recognize that we've needed to keep up with the, the times and uh, we have some heating issues that's been very inefficient. We've been spending so much money on, on heating and ventilation system repairs, uh, as well as the excess issues that we have found with uh, the public trying to get a bus pass, something as simple as that. So we want to make that uh, as convenient as possible. So starting uh, Monday, June 11th, we'll see the temporary trailer there. And uh, you won't have to look far. Once you get, once you get into the parking lot, it'll you'll be see right it. It'll be right there, yep. And it'll only be for about three months, too. So it's not a long-term change or anything like that. And it's all for the best because their new office will be wonderful and very accessible um, for everybody. So looking forward to that. And we appreciate everyone's patience during that time. Uh, it would not be an episode of City Manager's Report without a Buckstaff update. So I've got to ask you, Mark, what is the, what's the latest and greatest with the Buckstaff property? Well, things are moving forward. You may not necessarily see them, but there's actual construction or deconstruction activity in this case. First of all, all the money from all the parties are, are, are in an escrow account uh, to pay the contractor who began work this week. You're not going to see a lot because right now it's asbestos removal that needs to take place. And that needs to be done in a very confined uh, uh, atmosphere so that the dust doesn't uh, blow around because asbestos can be very dangerous. So that's the first part. So, you know, if you look closely, you'll see a truck or two there doing their thing. But you're not going to see a wrecking ball type mm -hmm. of thing uh, for quite a while. Uh, the idea is that uh, asbestos removal will continue... Uh, for the next two months. We're anticipating the asbestos work will be done by September 1. Okay. After that, then the real building demolition will start. And what I've been told from our staff is that the contractor will likely start in the back. They won't do right the facade of the street until the very end. So you'll still have to look closely, but the idea is that it's going to be uh, start the deconstruction, the demo will start uh, after asbestos is done around September 1 and it'll go into December and it'll be down. So uh, we're going to be taking pictures of it here at Oshkosh Media to uh, 
chronicle uh, mm -hmm. the demolition of the Buckstaff property. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm so happy. You might you be able, maybe able to talk me into going out and doing some video of it yes. as well. But um, we're not going to have any big demo party because technically it's not our project. It is uh, the owner of the building and uh, the escrow company. So we technically don't have anything to do with it, but obviously we have a great interest and we're gonna be looking for how this is gonna progress over the next few months. Well, really exciting stuff. It's kind of been a long time coming, I think you can agree. Plenty long time coming. It's probably the number one or two question I get asked mm -hmm. and the other one's Pioneer, but save that for another time, please. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, looking forward to seeing all that happening and uh, it's, it's just great news. So we're going to go ahead and skip our break this show. We have that much to talk about today, and we're going to skip question mark. We're going to get right into the agenda because there's a lot of good stuff to talk about. First item being, Mark, is the workshop that's going to take place before the council meeting dealing with the regarding the diversity coordinator study, and you're going to be giving a report at this workshop. Uh, right. Uh, back uh, when we were doing the 2016 budget, at the very end there was a question about is there a possibility of creating a diversity coordinator position? It wasn't something that had been anticipated, so the council gave that to me as, a, as one of my directives for the year to, to study the possibility of creating the position. So um, I've done uh, a, a great deal of research and had staff take a look at a lot of things. I've talked to a number of people, experts in uh, diversity, uh, both in and outside the community. Uh, done some surveying of other communities, which I thought was really important. And I've learned quite a bit, and I want to share that with the council to give them an idea of what uh, such a position would entail. Uh, so th that's kind of it. Yeah, and you're also going to be including the citizen survey results in there. Well, th that's a good point because we did have a citizen survey, as we do every year, and our, as I call it, the bonus question this year was, what do you think about the creation of a diversity coordinator position? Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, that was... Uh, pretty heavily against it, uh, but you have to take all of that with a grain of salt. Number one, uh, the profile of our uh, survey group tended to be a little older. Mm -hmm. But with that said, we've been asking a question for the last seven years in our surveys uh, that tell us what you think about the acceptance and openness to diversity in the community. And actually, we got rated pretty low on that one. So and that's what, just a regular question. And that's a question we ask every, every single year. year. And it's held pretty steady that, that that's an issue. So mm -hmm. that's something that we have to take a long, hard look at because that's our own residents telling us what they feel about it. So on one hand, the residents are saying, we need to do a better job on being open to diversity, but they don't necessarily want a position created. So we have a, a potential problem without a potential solution. So how do we bridge that all together? And I think uh, the work that you'll see in the study, we'll discuss that with council. And you know, there, there's, there's always different ways to approach something. And uh, I have a variety of options for the council to consider. The creation of the position is one, but there's many others that we can talk about. And one of the things I learned over this discussion with these experts in diversity are that there are best practices that we can look at. And I think that's probably appropriate for any discussion. It doesn't matter if you're talking about this topic or public works or, or public safety. You always want to be pursuing best practices. And I think that's what uh, we're going to talk about. How can we best serve needs when our community says, maybe we need to work a little bit on diversity. Wow. Well, a great topic to talk about for this workshop, and I think you it will is. have no problem filling the hour uh, time that we have before the council mm -hmm. meeting. Um, for our viewers, you are able to watch this workshop. It'll be live on GovTV at 5 o'clock. If you can't watch it live, it will be also on our website available and on our YouTube channel. So be sure to tune in for that and get all of the details on the diversity co coordinator study. Next item we want to talk about, Mark, is the approval on the consent agenda, the approval of the Stevens Park Neighborhood Plan, and that was presented to the Plan Commission last week. Yes, it was. The, the residents in the Stevens Park neighborhood, they've been very engaged. They're one of the first neighborhood associations we had. Uh, we really have used them for so many little guinea pig projects and the, the renovation of the Stevens Park uh, Park, the community garden, all those things. It's a wonderful, engaged neighborhood association. Uh, they took their time putting together what they believe to be their neighborhood plan. And uh, I think it really gives a good vision. And for people who are looking at locating in Oshkosh, this is an older neighborhood, but 
there's elements of cool to it that I think you may want to take a look at. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a variety of different housing uh, styles, stocks, uh, prices, and the neighborhood wants to encourage newcomers to be part of their community. And part of our neighborhood program is that uh, when you d adopt a neighborhood plan, that makes you eligible for a wider range of the services that we provide, makes you eligible for more programs because we want to know it's part of a neighborhood plan. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is uh, the neighborhood association's way of going to the next level and encouraging people to give Stevens Park a look and see if this is a place you maybe want to call home. Yes, and it's so exciting to hear news about the neighborhoods because people are catching on to the importance of having a neighborhood association and a neighborhood plan. And I like that you did detail what the neighborhood plan means and what it uh, makes available to that neighborhood because it's not just a piece of paper, it's a lot more than that. It's They put a lot of work into it and it opens up a lot of doors for neighborhoods, especially drawing people in. So it's very exciting stuff. Love to see that on agendas. Next item we want to talk about, Mark, is the approval of agreement with WACCO companies for the Transload facility in the Southwest Industrial Park. Tell us the latest and greatest on this. Well, Watco is another name for Wisconsin and Southern Railroad. So this is the railroad spur that we've been trying to get developed to replace the loading area uh, right uh, off of Washburn behind the residences on Allerton Drive. So the loud I know area. The loud area. <laughs> and the residents on Allerton Drive have been very patient in, in getting this done. This has taken so many twists and turns, but we've been focused on it. And I, I have to tell you, our community development staff has been just nothing short of outstanding in looking for creative solutions to keep this project up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's taken a little bit of twist because a few months ago, we, when we were talking about this, we were looking at uh, the transloading facility being on the south side of the railroad. Well, this has gotten to be so big that the south side of the railroad is not big enough for, for the transloading facility. And Watco, uh, Wisconsin Southern, is in need of a facility of about 23 acres oh, in, wow. in, in size. Uh, they would like to work with us to get the design done, and they have pe people on, on staff, but they have to charge for those types of services. So we've reached an agreement with them that uh, they will provide the services to us, and we will put a value on it, but instead of paying them in cash, it's going to be used as a credit against whenever they purchase the land from us. They will purchase um, about 20 acres. About three acres will be for the spurs, and that'll be owned by the city. Mm -hmm. The spurs will be uh, right there on city property. But adjacent to that, Watco will have a 20-acre transloading facility where businesses from throughout northeast Wisconsin can bring their, their goods to get loaded on at this site because a lot of businesses don't get rail service, this will enable businesses to get access to rail service from throughout the area. Mm -hmm. And that's just fascinating. And what this will do, this will get us into a position to qualify for what we're hoping will be a million dollar grant from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. It's called a Transportation Economic Assistance Grant, or a T grant. Um, we've been talking about this, we've applied for it, but because this, this project has continued to grow, which is, is good for everybody, uh, we got to be a little more patient. And this is the next step. This will enable them to get the plans done that will uh, be able to be submitted to the Department of Transportation for consideration of this grant. So we're very excited on it. Um, I don't have graphics for you today to show you some of the details, but uh, this is going to be great for our economy, great for businesses in the area, and it's going to be great for the Southwest Business Park because it'll be an accessible uh, transloading facility. Nothing like this exists in Northeast Wisconsin. Yes, and it's gonna be one of the, the only kind in Northeast Wisconsin, which is in turn bringing more people to Oshkosh. And it's really interesting to hear the details behind the Southwest and, or the transload facility that not a lot of people really understand what it means. And so thank you for the background on that. And we look forward to hearing more and seeing more on that soon. Next thing we want to talk about, Mark, under the consent agenda is Resolution 16-353, and that's to approve the $125,000 in capital catalyst matching funds from the Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund. What exactly does this mean? What is the specific RLF for this? The uh, RLF stands for Revolving Loan Fund, and we, uh, the city has a revolving loan fund of about $2.5 million. Mm -hmm. We became aware of what's called a capital catalyst 
program through the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. And our partners at the Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation, Go EDC, we're working together and we have received a grant of $125,000 that will sort of a specialty revolving loan fund, but it requires matching funds from the city. It's only for loan purposes, so it's still going to be loan money, but it's going to be more specialized for capital equipment for, for startup type of businesses. So essentially, we're adding an extra $125,000 uh, in state money into this into our revolving uh, revolving loan fund portfolio, uh, but it's specialty. So, but it'll be 250,000 of which we're only contributing 125,000. Ah, okay. So no loans yet. It's really just setting up the program so that we can offer that as one more feature in our economic development package. One more way to make that available to businesses. If a business is in need of some capital equipment to get them over the top to get a startup going, call Go EDC and they'll work with you. And uh, this is really just putting up our half of this uh, funds creation. So really excited about it. It just shows uh, the work that we're doing with Go EDC to make services available to prospective or expanding businesses. Wonderful. Always exciting things from Go EDC. Under pending ordinance, ordinances, Mark, we want to talk about the amend, amending the section 19-4D of the City of Ashkash Municipal Code, and that's related to domesticated animals in parks. Now, John and I talked about this in the last episode of City Manager's Report, and this is more just the final reading, reading of the ordinance. So tell us exactly when all this is going to be happening. When can we start walking our dogs or cats or whatever domesticated animals we have? It'll be very shortly thereafter because mm -hmm. the way that the Parks Advisory Board put this together, it's pretty much ready to go. So once it gets, uh, the day after it's published in the newspaper is technically when it takes effect. So uh, as soon as the city clerk's office gets it posted after Tuesday, assuming it gets approved by council, uh, this will happen. The, uh, I think things have changed over the last few years. We had a citizen survey question a few years ago. It was very divided and that prevented council from taking action. But I think pet owners have recognized over the years that they bear a certain level of responsibility. And one of the incentives for uh, being a responsible pet owner is, you know, you clean up after your dog, maybe we can open this up. And so many other communities are opening up their, their parks. And Menominee Park is a beautiful park mm -hmm. and it deserves to be treated correctly. So we're entrusting, uh, if this ordinance gets adopted, we're entrusting pet owners to be responsible pet owners and clean up after their dogs and keep them on a leash, hold them you know, within a, a, a certain area so that they don't vary too far, but it gives them an opportunity to walk their dog in the park, which is, I think every, what every pet owner, that's part of what they do it for. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, it's uh, the time has come for us to, at a minimum, experiment with this. But this is, if this works out, this is, this is ordinances for keeps. Great, great news, exciting things. Next item right after that is the designation of bike lanes on Irving Avenue from Wisconsin Street to Hazel Street. Uh, we've also talked about this before on the show and what is exactly is this connecting? This is part of our uh, master bike and pedestrian plan and in this case this is effectively connecting Menominee Park with the university because Irving ends right there uh, at the university uh, right near um, uh, Reeve Union and Horizon Village and to make traffic flow through town, the idea is we need to offer alternatives for bicycles to get around town as well. The real issue here is designating the bike lane effectively eliminates parking on one side of the street. Yes. And that's really been the, the issue of uh, contention with people. And there are some folks who would prefer not to have the parking removed. And you can certainly respect that if you have guests or something like that. Uh, and that's where I think the neighbors can work together. And some of the neighborhood associations have spoken up and said, we can work together as neighbors to make this work so that nobody, nobody takes ownership of the part in front of their house. It's shared by all. And right. if you have a guest, uh, you, you, let, you let my guest park in front of, or you, your guest park in front of my house or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I think we can work through this. But what it'll do is it'll, it, it'll open up a very major corridor on the north side of town that connects two huge destinations, Menominee Park and the University, and downtown and everywhere in between. Um, this makes residential areas much more attractive 
uh, millennials look for areas where they can bike. And if you want to attract young people to your community, bike lanes are a big part of it, um, both on and off road. But this will be one way for us to get going on that. Yes. Well, exciting things, connecting everything in Oshkosh. And um, I think it'll be worth the parking issue, too. Next item we want to talk about, Mark, is approval of creating Division Six residential rental contact, uh, re contact registration and inspection program. Now, this has been kind of a controversial topic. Um, what's been going on with this and what's the latest? I think council uh, has gotten a great deal of input from folks. I certainly have gotten a great deal of input from, from different people. Uh, the rental community is a wide range of people from small mom and pop owners to major corporations. And uh, from what I've heard is uh, some of the concerns have to do with more about the administration, not necessarily the policy itself. Some people have talked about the policy, uh, but I think council is pretty um, committed to some type of inspection program. Uh, with that said, I think we need to uh, maybe allow the council and the uh, rental community a little bit into my world of administration and the staff's world, how are we going to do this? And there's a lot of fear in that, and I want to allay those fears. And so I think it's appropriate to give them a little indication of how it will be administered. Mm -hmm. Some people have asked for a delay. The council will have to make a decision on uh, any delays. Uh, we're ready to implement the program, and we'll certainly communicate with people. But if council would like to see a little more information before they, they approve it, we're certainly happy to do that. I think that we need to give the rental community a sense of confidence that uh, this isn't a boogeyman hunt or anything like that, that we have a responsibility to do things correctly and, uh, and we'll work with whatever council decides to make sure that this uh, ordinance uh, is implemented in the most effective way and fair way possible. But it's, it's health and safety and that's a priority for us. Definitely, and we look forward to hearing more uh contact on that in Absolutely. the council meeting. Uh, last and final item that we have here, Mark, under new resolutions, and that's to approve the tax increment district for the Morgan District redevelopment. Now, they unveiled the, the renderings for the plans of this a few weeks ago. Tell us what the latest is on this. This is the approval by the council prior to the joint review board. The final say on this is actually not from the council. It's actually from a joint review board that consists of representatives not just from the city but the school district county and the technical college the 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 idea here is to create what's called as a pay-as-you-go TIF district so depending on how much value gets added to that district there will be an incentive provided to them based on the value of the property if they don't produce value they don't get a payment if they do produce value they do get a payment and it's over the life of the TIF district which is 20 to 27 years and uh, the idea behind that is to facilitate the development, much as what discussed last time, a mixed use, potential grocery store, mm -hmm. uh, and we think that's exciting. This group has been very cooperative with us. They gave it an easement for the trail that's gonna be going through there, and the construction's already going. They've shown a great deal of good faith, and the expectation is uh, that they're, they're making a request for a TIF, and they would like to get a strong consideration, and I think that's fair. Very cool. Well, we love talking about this, and I'm sure we'll continue to talk about it in uh, future episodes of City Manager's Report. Unfortunately, we are all out of time for today. I told you it was a packed show. We had a lot of Good stuff today. Good thing we skipped our break today, and of course, we'll be back for more in a couple weeks. So, Mark, as always, thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to do it. Again, the City Council meeting is this Tuesday, July 12th at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on GovTV or on our website, ashkashmedia.org. You can also listen to it on 101.9 Oshkosh FM, which is also online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Make sure you like our new page, Oshkosh Media, on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all of your community and government programming and updates. Or check out our YouTube channel for government meeting replays and past episodes of your favorite programs. Don't forget, if you do have a question for your city manager, Mark, email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us. You can also tweet it to us on Twitter or post it on our Facebook page, and he will answer it on one of the upcoming episodes of City Manager's Report. As always, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on City Manager's Report.